But the challenges, the challenges, the challenges, the priority in most of these individual countries you are referring to is, is governance. It's governance. So if you don't deal with the wrong people on the wrong positions, all what we are trying to do, we waste our time. Don't you think don't you think so? I mean, how long would it take us to how long would it take us to get the French out of Africa? We're not getting them out because we've got the wrong people in those places. How long will it take us to get better contracts with the Chinese? It would take forever because we've got the wrong people in those places. They get to the Chinese, they get to the French, they take their personal packages, get back home, they enjoy themselves, they don't care what their citizens go through. And should their citizens say anything, they are caught up and put in jail. I think right leadership, right leadership, Madam Ambassador, I think it should be something we should focus on. Look at Ghana, doing good. Rwanda, doing good. Why? Because of good governance. I think that is Africa's number one, number one problem. Well, thank you, Sam, for even pointing out some countries that are doing well. Which is why I was saying we cannot just blanket Africa and talk about corruption and, and people being arrested. We need to talk about issues as they pertain to a particular country or a particular situation and not paint Africa with one brush. So thank you for pointing that out. Let me also say, when you look at our history, the reason Francophone countries were not discussing the issue of uh, the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization is because our history had shown that any president who tried to go there, they were either assassinated or imprisoned. It was a death sentence. So we have some serious realities that if, unless these issues are addressed in a tactful manner, we are now moving in a direction that these leaders are going to have cover as they try to move forward and pull away from France. An individual country like Togo trying to pull away from France is mission impossible. However, all of West Africa coming together and speaking with one voice is a much easier battle to fight to pull away from France than if the individual countries are, are trying to do it on their own. Now the manipulation and the infiltration and, and the control uh, that and the games that are played behind the scenes to keep these West African countries from coming together and have a single monetary policy, that's another issue. You are quite right, my son. By now, we should have a single, at least a single regional currency uh, in most of these, in the five African regions. So yes, you are quite right. The conversations need to take place, but wherein comes to where we must understand the games the colonizers have played in Africa for far too long. It's gonna take young people like you, my son, to really understand it, to unite in numbers. There are not yet enough of us who get it. When we unite in numbers and we are awoken and we no longer have the shackles of the mind, we can stop the insanity that is going on in Africa today. There is no other way to, uh, to describe it. The exploitation of Africa that is going on today has got to stop. You look at value addition, something so simple value addition to our natural resources. It's something that we should automatically do. That is why our youth are unemployed. And yet our money is creating jobs for the Europeans. The young youth in Europe are getting jobs because of Africa's natural resources. What little girls in Europe need is exactly what little girls in Africa also want. So you are right. We need more critical masses. We need more diaspora to go home. Let's join our brothers. Let's be the loudest voice to continue to push for Africa that is free of exploitation, an Africa that is truly independent, and an Africa that can uh, that can compete on the world stage just like the rest of the big boys. That can only happen when we unite, which is why I'm so glad we have the African continental free trade area, and I hope that every diaspora can understand it and see it as the completion of what the Pan-African fathers were looking for in 1963. Let's support the African continental free trade area and let's organize and plan to play our part in building the Africa we want. 
All right, thank you. Let me uh, move over to Megan. Megan, uh, if you place good governance and uh, these contracts, fair contracts that we are talking about between Africa and China, Africa and uh, Europe, which one would you choose for a priority to fix governance or to fix contracts? <laughs> It has to fit the people. It, the, the, these, these things can't be for the governance and the pockets of the people. It can't be, uh, it has the people and the nation and it has to be to the benefit of the country that those contracts are, are in. Um, the Queen, she, she mentions the uh, continuation of the colonization pact and the difficulty it is to move away from uh, uh, that. If I might tell you a little bit there, uh, my question is, you listen to the ambassador putting a lot of emphasis on the need for uh, organization on the ground, the people's uh, organization, but I kind of differ with her. I think the pressure, more pressure should be put on the government, the leaders to do what is right. But in your yes. position, uh, you, have, you, you have had some experience dealing with Africans. What would you prefer the most first? Is it good governance that then execute good contracts or you choose to go yes. first? with good contracts that maybe bring jobs uh, to the country. What would you go for first? Yeah, there, there's no point in spending good contract if you have bad governance, because that good contract is supposed to bring revenue to the country. And if you have bad governance, then that revenue isn't going to be used correctly for, the com for, for that country. We first need good governance. We have good people surrounded by good people. So not just one party. Part of all of the governance needs to be united in, in the front and the fight for that particular country. So if you have good governance and then you have good, good place, then you will have great economy and, 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 and great um, resources and, and everything that is needed because you've gotten rid of what is corrupt. You've already gotten rid of what is rubbish and you've brought something good in place and then they've put something even better in place. So therefore, all of it is, is for the benefit of the, uh, the individual countries within the continent. All right. So uh, you would advise Africans to change their, their leaders? Absolutely. Absolutely. And look, I can't, as you said, you can't blanket it and say absolutely every single leader in Africa is corrupt. But we have to also be fair in saying, I mean, if you look at the amount of money that has come in, uh, and I know it seems like we're attacking China, but that's sort of the issue that we're dealing with. So if you look at the amount of money that has come into Africa from China just in the past 12 years, just in the past 12 years, you are looking at uh, $245 billion. So uh, 200, uh, sorry, $500 billion. So from between 2006 and 2018, there was $240 billion in loans for infrastructure that's not going to raise any kind of revenue. Then China itself has also invested another $245 billion across, the, and that's only in the top 10, with um, uh, the Republic of Congo being having $15 million up to Nigeria, who has, I think, $60 million. Uh, billion. So the amount of money that's coming into the country is it's equal to, if you look at $500 billion, it's equal to roughly 360, uh, $350 US dollars per citizen across the entire continent of Africa. With that kind of money, we should see some real change. They should have, they, they should be a, a superpower. They should be an absolute super player and a main player in, in, in the game and not still relying on more loans and more money. Because they have the ability to generate their own. They have everything it needs. It doesn't need anything from outside. But if you don't have good governance, then the money that's coming in isn't getting put to good use. Now, China particularly, as you mentioned, is, some, is a country that's doing really well, but they're not doing well enough. And it may be controversial to say, but when you have us spending nine point something million dollars to relocate a passport office to build a cathedral, cathedral worth billions, millions and hundreds of millions of dollars whilst you don't even have a, a psychiatric center your your hospitals are, have got rot and wood you've got people seeking out prayer camps rather than hospitals because the hospital the standard of the hospital care health care is just substandard so 
without good governance, all of these billions of dollars mean nothing. A great contract is nothing without good governance, so that the money that's being raised, the revenue, will go back to the continent and the country. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I hope that we are getting uh, something out of this.